Thanks for joining in to Extinction Rebellion Live. Now for a bit of regenerative culture, some great tips on how to cook simple meals that won't cost the planet with Toby and Dora. Hello. 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 Hi. How are you doing? So, as Christian said, this is Toby. Hi. And this is Dora. Dora, the amazing Dora. And this is Cooking for Climate, which is a part of the series of Alone Together. And uh, as Christian mentioned, this series will cover a lot of different subjects that help you get through this period. And we are happy to welcome you in our home. Oh yeah, yeah. Welcome to our home. It's wonderful. We're all. We're all in our homes at the moment. Obviously, we know what's going on. The isolation is all a bit weird. The virus, what's going on out there? But our homes are our sanctuaries, and they're safe. And I hope you're all feeling safe that and happy be, yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. I hope it is that for everybody. So yeah, welcome to our home. Yeah. And, what we're and doing? we have a very special recipe for tonight. So um, normally on a Sunday night, we like to have something quick, I suppose. But during the week, I'm more likely to be in the mood to cook something a bit more serious and spend, spend more time in doing something. We are. There. <laughs> I cook as well. We are, mm. that's true. But on a Sunday night, mostly I prefer something quick because I just want to watch a movie and, you know, <laughs> be lazy and uh, prepare for the next week. So we bought you something, some things because it's a series of recipes, three yep. mainly, that all take about 10 minutes to prepare. Yeah. Um, basically, we are going to make a semolina, semolina loaf. loaf or some on the bread or some on the cake but yes. it's savory so you can put this next to anything which is 10 minutes prep we're also making a kale uh, pesto but it's a rebellious <laughs> pesto <laughs> so it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's basically it's, it's a sauce we like we don't necessarily we're not making a, a pesto to go onto any pasta or onto a gnocchi like we did last week it's just a sauce and, and a healthy sauce which is actually really beautiful and we can have yeah. it with the semolina cake yeah and we're also just, uh, as we did last week, we've got asparagus, which is uh, seasonal, um, and we're baking that with some mushrooms and some rosemary and salt and pepper and a little bit of oil. Yeah, and the good thing about this is within 10 minutes, you put everything into the oven, it does the job for you, and by the end, you have a very good variety of things, yeah. which will cover most of your nutritional needs and vitamins and minerals and so forth, so we don't have to worry about eating something that you wouldn't like. And also we are trying to make it um, affordable yeah. and easily reachable because right now it's quite difficult uh, to get some of the stuff, especially if you live in an area where you don't have access to all the shops, for example. That's true. So someone is something that is quite easy to get. Uh, you can get it, uh, I think, in all the major shopping malls or in small local Polish shops or Turkish shops. This is a very, very traditional yeah, yeah. Um, and I think often forgotten ingredient. Which is all of them. <laughs> I was talking about semolina. I was saying semolina. <laughs> but mushroom is also forgotten. I never forget mushrooms because they're amazing. They're beautiful things. And kale. Should we show the kale actually? Kale. We don't even have it out, do we? Yeah. So kale. Just to bring on some excitement. This is very exciting. How gorgeous. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? It's super beautiful. The colour is absolutely amazing. It's a bit like a monster. It is. <laughs> it's slightly like a monster. And we were so chuffed. I just yeah. learned this word recently. Chuffed. Because we got this unpackaged, and normally you cannot get this without packaging, plastic packaging, obviously, which we are really not in favour of. Yeah, yeah, it, it was really important. We were so excited. We were we got to get kale! Yeah. So, so we did. Farm shops. Yeah, that's very true. Farm shops and supporting local farms and farm, arable farms uh, is very important, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. It's really, really good. The, yeah. This is amazing. This is uh, really good. It's, got, it's full of calcium. It's a really, really good source of calcium. Vitamin A, vitamin K. Between C, Ooh, it's a bit, not, a bit well, this one's a bit dodgy. This one's not very good, but it's a really good source of calcium, and it's plant-based calcium, which our bodies absorb easily. Which, is, which is, we all know, no, we need calcium for bones and teeth and air and, yeah. and living healthy. So, really, really good source. So, let's show the semolina loaf, which is going to be the main thing today. Would you present? Uh, I'm doing the presenting. Look at this. Yeah. So. What I love about this recipe is that you literally can't mess it up. <laughs> it's true. So <laughs> whatever you have at home, you can put into this. It's literally semolina, water, and you just chuck all the vegetables inside. So right now we put carrots and chives. Yep. 
and, and red pepper, didn't we? Red pepper, some ginger. But if you have, let's say, peas or beans, even yeah, yeah, um, pepper, even tomatoes, um, anything really. Uh, oh, I also put some uh, courgettes would be probably quite nice in oh, this as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I put some um, dill as well because we have some dill in the window, so it's so versatile. Anyone can make it very easy. If you have children, it's a great fun as well oh, because so it's just. Mix it all up. And then you just shove it in the oven and it's half an hour, is it roughly? Yeah, and you can bulk produce this. So again, if yeah. you have a big family, for example, you can put two, three of them into the oven and tick, tick, tick. Even done. I made it the other last week and Dora showed me how to make it. it as, like, if tick, you, tick, tick, as if you're a bad cook, you're amazing. No, no, but I didn't know how to make it. It was so easy well, to true. make. And the colours are amazing as well, because this is, uh, I believe, is mixed spice and, <laughs> and turmeric. Yeah. And as you can see on top, sesame seeds. <laughs> but yeah, so, this yeah. is great. It's so versatile. It's beautiful. And it tastes amazing. Um, should we get started then? I think we should get started, yeah. Because I'd like to give you this pot. Oh, please do. My favorite one. I'll be holding things. <laughs> As a start. So, okay, you know what? You do the thing and I just tell you how to do it. <laughs> Come on. So we are going to use one cup of semolina to start with. And we have this measuring, measuring cup. cup. It is plastic, but we have this, I had this before. And if you don't have a measuring cup, uh, um, you could actually try. This is like a normal cup. I mean, maybe I'm talking something obvious, but no, no, no. honestly, it has been such a problem for me for many, many years. Like, how much is a cup? Is this cup a cup or a larger cup? So maybe we can just try to. I think the equivalent in a cup cup is a tea. Let's cup. try. Let's try to fill this okay. up and then see how much it is. So this is uh, me trying to do semolina <laughs> online. So semolina is really good for. It's better than white flour. And it it's good for, um, it generates uh, blood, red blood cells, doesn't it? It does. And it's also drum beat, which is a lot healthier for you. So um, instead of white flour, using this is actually quite. And it's based in the UK too. So yeah, yeah. So this is like one cup with the proper measuring instrument. This is a cup, which has actually, where is this from? Oh, this is the- uh, It's like the, an animal right. Yeah, it's an animal right. So we have the, the hair, it's an anti-hunting. Because we, uh, they hunt hair, they um, coarse hairing, which is, is not very nice. Um, and then the fox, which gets uh, hunted and persecuted, and the badgers, which get persecuted oh, for TB. Uh, it's really, it's awful. So this is supporting, supporting them, supporting That's really people cool. who look after and, and stand up for these animals. That's really cool. So I just transferred this and, huh, it's not even a full one actually, but this much. But don't worry if it's uh, a bit too much or a bit too less. I mean, literally you can't mess this recipe up at all. So, tea. Yeah. Would you like to continue? So yeah, so this is, we're going to pour this into the, uh, the saucepan, which is an amazing saucepan. <laughs> Ready. And so here are the vegetables we are going to add to this. Uh, we have got some red Ooh. pepper. Red pepper is chopped up. Yeah. Can I show how it looks like? Can I put it in my hands? Because I wash yeah. hands. Yeah. You wash hands. So this is the red pepper okay. chopped up into little bits. I just put it in. I mean, this is so simple. <laughs> Okay, what else are we putting in? Um, we got the carrot. You want to grate it? We have a great carrot. <laughs> this is washed as well. I like this. I do nothing. I just have to do and get it done. <laughs> I'm going to grate the carrot. Um, some people take the tips off, um, and it's good while you're grating to keep the, the bottom end on um, because it gives you more of a more of a hold, more of a more, more of a purchase. Yeah. So this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, you can do the whole thing if you want. I should. Uh, I should. You know the whole. Three quarters? Yeah, three quarters. Okay. Okay. So in terms of ratio, if you've got one cup of semolini, we want to put like one cup of vegetables as well. Um, and then one cup of water in the end, and that's it. And you just slice it up. There's no bicarbonate of sodium as well. Yeah. Oh, you know, the secret. Oh. <laughs> so is that enough or should I put a little bit more? Uh, I think it's enough. Oh, it's yeah. more than enough, yeah. Is it too much? It's good. It's okay. good. So and this can go to the side and we can do this later. And then we are growing some chives in our garden. So we thought, why not use something that you already have available? Yeah, and these are very, very beautiful, nice and there. Uh, well, how would you explain this, describe the taste of a chive? Uh, oniony. Oniony, sort of a bit, not spicy, but... I don't know how to describe it, it's good. It's very good. Sorry, I'm munching again. That's and this bad habit of eating food before it's done. That's a good habit. Because you then, you, then it's actually a good habit to get into, I think, because you then know if the food is off. Because sometimes it looks good and you have a taste of it, and for some reason it's gone off. 
uh, and it's a it's a good habit I think to put people yeah. into. Is that a bit uh, thicker? Yeah, uh, it's good enough. Yeah. So I've chopped it into little bits like this. Oh, that oh, smells that amazing. amazing! So this is going to go straight in. Yeah. And what else are we putting in? Um, what did I use? What did I use? Oh, the uh, red pepper. Oh, I had some dill. Do we do, are we going to do the red pepper at all? Oh, yes. Yes, right there. <laughs> Let me do some dill. So this deal is dying anyway, but I don't really care. So as you can tell, it's drying off. But when you, oops, when you dry, uh, when, you, when you buy dry deal in the shops, it's dry anyway. So like, why not use a dried deal from the window? Well, that's very true, isn't it? Yeah. So this, this is going to go in. Yeah, wait, I can make some, make some more. Can you chop it up into small pieces? Please? Yes, of course. So even with this prep that we are doing right now, you can check the time. It's going to take 10 minutes. Even if we talk, yeah, which, which <laughs> I'm going to be cross checked on this. <laughs> obviously, it was 11 minutes. It was 11 and a half Fair minutes. <laughs> so, welcome all to our home from YouTube, oh. Twitter, Facebook. On Animal Rebellion, Next Thing Rebellion UK. Animal Rebellion, Next Thing Rebellion. What did you mention? You mentioned all the platforms, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, hello and welcome. This is this is uh, Cooking for Climate. Which is a part of the Alone Together series. That's great. Yeah, and actually we got this question earlier. Like, why does XR do cooking show? It's not really an XR thing. And you know what? It's a totally fair point. Um, I think I would be surprised at first too. But then I think the reason why XR decided to do this Alone Together series with trainings and yoga and meditation and cooking and so forth is because a part of our transition is also talking about solutions yeah. and we don't necessarily know the solutions Toby and me I think we are also just exploring stuff uh, but uh, I think it's interesting to share what conclusions we came to and how we are trying to buy unpackaged local seasonal achievable cheap um, plant-based plant healthy cruelty free and yeah. all these alternate it can be a bit overwhelming if you are just stepping into that right now um, but I think something like this could help. So I hope that this is going to be a bit of an inspiration and fuel to your journey. And it's also sort of building a small community. Uh, the regenerative culture is really, really important. And we have to, that needs to go on and on and on throughout uh, our lives and everyone else's lives and, mm. and in relation to each other and the animals that we share this, uh, this planet with. It's, it's really important. From generation to generation. From world to world. <laughs> so what? So, so um, how, do we, how do I mix this? So this is... <laughs> This is all the vegetables in there, the salmon onions at the bottom. Yeah. If you just joined, what you're making right now here is this salmon on the bread. Oh. Bread. <laughs> bread cake or whatever it is, loaf. Yeah. And it's basically just semolina water and yeah. what vegetables? Uh, we've got carrots, herbs, um, uh, dill, chives, and red pepper. Yes. So then how do we mix it up with a spoon? Yes. Or and uh, let's add some uh, bicarbonate of soda. So I managed to get, um, get this in a paper packaging. And if you want paper packaging, get it from a Polish shop or um, Turkish or uh, Eastern European shops. They normally have this paper package one. Otherwise, what you will get in a shop is the, like this. It's, yeah. um, I think it's partially, no, it's, it's all plastic. So I don't, I, don't really, I don't really like this, but this is great. Um, it doesn't have as much in quantity, but I don't, I don't really prefer plastic. So. Anyway, you're going to put like half a teaspoon, not teaspoon, yeah, half, half a teaspoon of this into the uh, mix. In? Yeah, 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 I'm just going to do that. And with this, what, with all the food we, we, we do in um, um, cooking for climate, <laughs> that, was, that was more than half a teaspoon, um, it's plant-based and what we're trying to do is local and seasonal. We can't always do that and there's not too, too much coming out right now um, in our garden and in the people's gardens that we know. Um, so we've got chives, we've got cress, um, asparagus is coming out, oh, we bought that, that's seasonal, and it's all, we're trying to get it as local as possible to reduce the imports, to do, reduce the carbon footprint of every, every type of food that we, 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 we choose in, in this series. I think it's very, very important. So we got some amazing comments. Uh, Thank thanks so much, uh, Gordon on Twitter and Nigel on Facebook. Sorry, I'm a bit out, but... And we got a question as well from Veronica Valentine. What are you making? I didn't see the start of the live feed. Can we just uh, introduce again? Because we certainly can. So we have here a semolina cake. A bread, but loaf. it's savory. Really, really nice. So you can prepare this with what you're making right now is a kale sauce or kale pesto. 
to add some juice yes yeah, we can dip it in and so forth and we're also making um, mushroom and asparagus with a bit of rosemary in the oven so very very simple today yeah a lot of people work all week week and they, they often have in the uk especially they have a traditionally big sunday lunch so we don't need uh often a lot of people don't need a, a massive meal in the evening so this is just like a snacky thing that we can after a long week and sit down and prepare for the next week but it's quite filling as well oh it's, and really tasty and very yeah. very nutritious yeah 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 right so let's <laughs> add a cup of water to that okay and this is what it looks like veronica i believe it was okay. yeah mm -hmm. you want me to pour the water here you and can pour the water in here go on in Whoop. that's it's always it. scary and then just mix up the fork yeah so i'm just mixing yeah. So if you guys can see in the background, we've got two flags. Uh, can you guess? Oh, there. <laughs> so that one, <laughs> you can probably tell that's the XR flag, Extinction Rebellion. But I wonder if anyone knows what that flag is. If you do, please comment. <laughs> and the, the first person who comments. Um, gets a smile <laughs> from us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, should do like um... <clears throat> No, don't start. That. Okay. No, <laughs> don't, don't start. But yeah, let, let us know. Um, and if not, I will tell you later, but uh, Toby is mixing it up. Do we need more Salina? Uh, can I take it over? Of course, So as we were saying, this is welcome uh, to our home. Um, from you know, I believe you're watching us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, which is amazing. So big love to you all. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you've all had an amazing week and you're having an amazing day. I mean, the, the sun's been amazing. I think I'm a bit red. Oh, your neck is. My neck's red. Red neck. Yeah. Howdy, partner. So yeah, I get a bit redneck sometimes, but it's, it's the it's the Irish in me. So what else we put in? Yeah, I forgot to add. So the recipe. Well, okay. So if you check the description, you will see the recipe for the semolina cake or semolina bread, um, and it suggests to put um, like a quarter cup of plant-based yogurt, which I don't have and don't want to buy because it's in plastic anyway. So I'm just using mustard. And uh, I also have a coconut milk opened in the fridge nice. uh, in a can, which is recyclable. Coconut is not local though. So again, like, um, you know, choices, choices, but I'm going to add like a, a spoon of this right now and maybe a spoon of the coconut milk as well. Yeah, just to balance it out. Yeah, yeah, instead of the yogurt. And as Zora said, you know, there are certain aspects and certain ingredients that uh, are coming from abroad. abroad. Um, at the moment, we're both finding that when we go shopping there are fewer options aren't there because you can't you can't just trundle around the supermarket or whatever you sort of feel like you want to go in and out um with the masks and being as, as socially distancing as possible so there are fewer choices you have less time you'll go to one shop instead of two or three you know that kind of thing so um there are we are we do try to use local we do try to use seasonal um but occasionally we have to sort of uh put Put up with and put up with what's it, the system giving us. Yeah. And one day, when the system is uh, fixed. fixed and just and equal, you know, a plant based food and system, sustainable, sustainable um, no oppression, um, person to person, person to animal, person to um, planet, you know, when it's all, all sustainable and peaceful, people will be growing their own food, it'll all be local, we'll, we won't be importing and exporting, we'll have our own, our own products here. So it'll be easier, I guess, to, to be uh, more sustainable and to have our carbon footprint as minimal as possible. That's a nice prophecy. Like, you know, if you, there's this concept of the self fulfilling prophecy that you say it and then it just becomes the truth. Yeah. So what you said is just one of those. I hope so too. It's already in there. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. We'll use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we do, <laughs> because you don't have that shape, you, you, you guys know that cake shape, how do you call that tray? Oh, it's like a mold, I think. Yeah, cake we, don't, mold. we don't have that. So we have this thing from, so I, I don't know where, and we just keep reusing this every time. I think it was from a falafel place. Oh, yeah. um, and so we just fill it in with the baking paper and we use it unlimited amount of times. Yeah, I think it's really important, the five bars. Oh, you guys I'm, are the five bars. I haven't mentioned that for a while. Um, the one. Reduce. No. no. Refuse. Refuse. Reuse. Reduce. Recycle and rot. Yes. Ah, ah yes. Oh, and that's God. another sort of great way of life and great philosophy of, uh, of being. 
Oh, oh, wait, a question on Facebook. So there is a question, where is the rebellion? Uh, okay, great point. Where's the rebellion? I think the rebellion is, uh, wow. Well, it's every day. We're all... It's every, I agree. You want to respond? No, no, please. You, you, you know, I don't want to be too sentimental, but the rebellion is in everybody's hearts. <laughs> I do think we are going through a transformation right now, everybody individually, but also our system. Yeah. And um, if you check out the XR newsletters, you will see a lot of stuff happening uh, with this uh, no going back campaign um, that XPX Rebellion is doing right now. And it's also super exciting what uh, the NGOs in the UK are doing right now. So there is an NGO circle, it's currently taking shape right now. And they are talking about uh, some shared narratives. It's, it's really amazing. And um, also, you probably remember the movement of movements concept from October, which sort of happened. And a lot of movements came along. And uh, for example, Enemy Rebellion is sort of a separate movement. Oh, I just gave away the clue. So that flag uh, up there, sorry, is Enemy Rebellion. And that's a separate movement, but it's a sister movement to Extinct Rebellion. And then there were you know, XR Jews and XR Muslims and uh, women's rights and uh, LGBTQ and faith. So all different movements came together in October and that is expanding. And we do have, I mean, who is we? Uh, we, the movement of movements have a space mm -hmm. uh, where they get together and talk about what is the next step. So, so there is a lot of stuff going on right now. So if you're interested, I highly recommend to use this time to join any of the movements and um, yeah, and add your talents and thoughts. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, and the rebellion still goes on. I mean, it, you know, whoever wants to see it, that we need to change and, and wants to change and, is, and wants to stand up and is actively standing up. Um, that's all part of the rebellion, whether it be against um, all these different types of repression that's going on um, with, with, with regards to the climate, or all these uh, different issues that, that we all face on a daily basis. Um, and all the animals and all the plants on this planet will be placed on a daily yeah. basis as well, which we, could, this, which we shouldn't be up because it's so, so important, so vital. This system, this biodiversity, the ecosystems, we really need to support these and be aware of them as well. Yeah, which is the reason why we decided to do permaculture, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, I think if we had to say what are the weekly mm -hmm. favorites, permaculture is one of them. We're definitely digging that. <laughs> We're digging? <laughs> We're digging. And but... yeah, go ahead. Well, go on. Yeah, go on. Okay, we're digging, but we actually know digging as well. So we've, uh, we've, well, I think it's been a concept that's been on for a while, and it's it can be part um, incorporated into the permaculture philosophy and way of creating uh, and, and planting. Um, but it's a no dig philosophy. So not only does it not break, uh, you know, when you dig, you break your back, but it also um, it's been discovered that the, the top layer of the soil is, is full of all these microorganisms. Um, that are so essential to growth of the plants, um, to keeping the, the soil together so there's, there's, there's no runoff and the, blow, and the wind doesn't blow the topsoil off. Mm. Um, and it feeds the plants directly, the ones that you're actually feeding, um, putting in to turn into food later on. So when you dig it up, it messes up the whole system. All these, I think nematodes and, and insects and worms and, and beetles and whatever else goes in there, all their excretions when they um, break up the organic matter, it stays in that level. And when you do, so the idea is to mulch with cardboard, um, put uh, compost over, and then a mulch on top. And that kills the grass and kills the plants and the weeds that are underneath instead of having to dig them out. It takes a little bit more preparation because you need to give it a little bit more time so the grass and the weeds die off. But then you plant directly into the, com uh, the compost that you put on top. And then you put a bit of mulch on top to keep away, uh, to keep the, the, the moisture in and keep the weeds from coming up. And there's so many reasons why permaculture is, <laughs> I find it so exciting and don't actually come from um, agriculture and gardening background. So I have no previous experience. But the reason why I find it so extremely exciting is because I keep reading all these news on the internet. So for example, a friend of ours, Sonia, she uh, recently so reposted an article about uh, modern slavery in the, in the food systems. Oh, yes. It's like bloody hell. I mean, I knew about epic animal culture and, uh, and how intensive animal farming is during the planet and the methane that comes out of that and how the greenhouse gas contributes to it's climate crazy. change and, and you know, the, all the, the pesticides used in monocropping and you know, all these various issues. And, and I sort of was aware that you know, these industries have other downsides as well. 
But bloody hell, and that is a local thing. So that happens in Spain, for example. Yeah. So maybe this paprika or pepper, whatever you call it. Pepper. It's possible it was made by someone who was not paid properly and uh, had to work incredible hours a yeah. week and uh, support the family or whatever they need to do. It's awful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, yeah, we're trying to be more mindful and permaculture is one of these steps is growing our own food, but in a way that we don't harm nature at the same time or harm the least possible and also recultivate species. Um, I'm, I hope that like this time is the end of the lawns. And everybody's just going to bring on the wildlife. Please stay. I mean, amazing. <laughs> Exile North is doing an amazing campaign called D4. And that, uh, that comes along from the idea of, I think it was after the Second World War, was Dig for Victory or Dig for Britain. When, uh, again, we were having issues with import. I mean, obviously, the World Wars created a lot of problems with it, bringing food in and creating food and, and producing, uh, 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 producing food here. Yeah. So the, the, the shout went out and the request went out for everyone to sort of dig up their lawns, start creating you know, vegetable patches, and people do that, they've got parks and, and around in the middle of roundabouts and so forth. So, so check out XR North is North's um, Dig4 uh, campaign or, or project on, on Facebook. It's really interesting, yeah. really interesting, really helpful. And on that note, if you would like to take part in mm. this discussion even more, I super much, <laughs> super much, super much. Super much recommend you check out what Animal Bunny is doing again, like I'm trying to raise my hand here at the flag. Um, you can find Animal Rebellion on Facebook, uh, on uh, Google, and they have a website. We have a website. I would say we because we are part of Animal Rebellion as well. And um, um, join the campaign for a plant-based food system that is sustainable and just. And uh, I think, I don't, don't think I know that Animal Rebellion started from recognition that without the system it change. It's impossible to transfer on the global level, but even in the local level. Um, you have some questions there. Well, I'm looking at questions. I was just trying to work it out. Let's go backwards. Yes. So, uh, Rose Ellen says, I have the same kettle. <laughs> cool. It's a great kettle. <laughs> kettle <Just> sister. <laughs> kettle family. We are kettle family. <laughs> Uh, All our kettles and and you and me <laughs> boiling water. Um, Veronica is a second flag to do with anti dairy. Ah. You want to go? Well, the second flag is to do with anti dairy. It's um, uh, animal rebellion. It's a sister movement of uh, extinction rebellion. Um, they follow the same principles, the same demands. But basically, um, animal rebellion uh, was set up because it believes that these principles and these demands can't be met. Unless uh, we push for a plant, a, a just plant-based food system. So it's with regard to um, the impact of animal agriculture, both on the climate, on the environment, and on the animals involved. And people as well. And very much, very much people. Um, it's to do with fisheries, it's to do with dairy, it's to do with meat, it's to do with eggs, honey, all the animal products um, that have this, this negative impact. So, so yes, it is, that flag is to do with uh, um, uh, Highlighting the issues with dairy and, and wishing for it to end because of all those reasons uh, just mentioned. So thank you for the question, amazing. Yeah. And and look them up. I mean, they're they're growing and growing and growing. And Dora here was one of the first, uh, one of the founders of Animal Rebellion. Um, and she realised, and uh, a few other people realised how important it was to to put in the fact that uh, we 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 really need a plant based food system. It's the only just food system that we that we would we can live with. I think, yeah, I think this is really the time to bring on any movement that either participates in or you ever thought should exist, because this is a time of coming together, yeah. uh, the movement of movements, which actually started in October, but it's, it's going ahead. And um, you probably remember this hashtag or tagline from October, it says everybody now, and I think it is still going on even though, or maybe because we are all at home, yeah. it is a time that actually we can invest. I mean, I'm being a bit probably judgmental not everybody can invest but i think a lot of us who have the time to maybe watch a, a live online can have some time to invest into matters that, that you, you know you care about and if you think that the movement is missing from the movement of movements um, mix then just you know speak to someone and before you realize others will jump in and, and join you and um, take things over that's so so true and we had an amazing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Karen Newton said we're absolute stars. So you're an absolute star, Karen. Yeah. Thank you so so much. And you're all absolute stars. Welcome to you all. Um, you're in Dora 
and Toby's home. Um, we're cooking for climate. Welcome to YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And thank you all for like tuning in and being amazing people and wonderful and magical and being yourselves and and just being. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, did you say this is cooking for climate? No, I didn't. So I will say this is cooking for climate, which is a part of a series of videos where uh, we try to show recipes that we found accessible, easy, cheap, sustainable. Local, local, unpackaged, seasonal if we can, seasonal as possible. Just trying to play around like, with ideas and uh, share it with you and maybe inspire you or um, not inspire, just the pain you. <laughs> and also, if you have any suggestions, please uh, send in because we're always we, we want to be inspired, don't we? Oh yeah, please, please, please uh, do, do, do leave us comments yes. and we're going to try to respond. So we hold this laptop on the side and I'm oh, sorry. Okay. And uh, yeah, going to try to respond if you have any questions to us. Please, please do. Amazing. And we're also, I don't know if you mentioned, um, Alone Together. Oh. So the XR um, campaign. Oh, it's a campaign. It's a campaign. Yeah, campaign yeah, movement is, a, um, is amazing if you want even find out about it. And it's basically, um, it tells us, uh, gives us ideas of what we can do um, in this situation we all find ourselves in. You know, there are, there are events, there are little things that families and individuals can entertain themselves with, which is wonderful. Yeah. Are there any more comments? <laughs> Amazing comments from uh, Erin. Yes, go vegan. Liberate yourself from abusing animals. Yes. Did you, did you have this uh, feeling of liberation when you you change your diet first? I felt. I felt. The, I think the biggest thing that I felt when I changed my diet, which was about three or four years ago, and the reason I changed my diet was um, because I was told and I was informed that I didn't need animal products to survive. I'd always thought I needed meat for protein. I needed milk for uh, calcium, I needed honey for energy, I needed eggs for protein. You know, we're, we're told all this by people who, by our governments, by TV, by, you know, um, our families, by friends and schools and so forth. And I believed it and I, I loved animals and I, I cared for animals. I worked at a wildlife hospital for years and with dogs, stray dogs. And as soon as someone told me that I didn't need to eat or consume or wear or put, you know, creams that have been tested on animals on my, my body. And I was, I felt, I felt liberated and I started to love myself a lot more. And it was a, such a, an amazing revelation because subconsciously, I think I was realizing how, uh, um, what a negative impact I was having on the world and on these individual animals um, as I was eating them and wearing them and, 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 Oh, oh. Yeah, we were talking about it today, didn't we, about uh, veganism, because I think veganism, the world, vegan became a swear word, it's like, oh, leave me alone, yeah. like, you know, not the vegans again, and we were joking around today, at the <laughs> allotment actually, that there are these uh, very famous and quite, how to say, attacky taglines that you can't be an environmentalist as long as you're <laughs> vegan, and we started to play around, like, actually, as we sit around, you can't be a vegan unless you're an environmentalist and you also cannot be a vegan unless you're a permaculturist and you can't be a permaculturist and you're unless you're a vegan you can't be um human rights activist unless you're a vegan and you like you can mix everything with everything and in the end day you realize that it's all interconnected so you know if if you i don't i don't think that's if you then because this is such a, yeah. a negative way to propose concepts but i think if you measure all these different um Sorry, subjects, you will see that they all exist in a circle and they connect with each other. So what we can really do right now is just to engage in these conversations. And that's why I really love what um, Extinction Rebellion is doing yeah. with all these circles, these Zoom calls where you can attend and speak to other people, whether it is through Animal Rebellion or Extinction Rebellion, or you can have your own thing. Like really, it's, it's so, so free. It's all interconnected. People. Yeah, and engage with other people from other movements or other backgrounds who have their thought. And this is really the time where I think a lot of people show more solidarity. So there, you have higher chances that you will be listened to and you have the chance to listen to someone else as well. So this regenerative culture and uh, citizen assembly type of discussion is really super helpful right now to connect the dots between all these separate issues. So I hope that in the new world, we don't get to say go vegan because just like, and, and go feminist and go, yeah. um, I don't know, anti-racist and go like everything. And it's just like the norm that we all, work towards those, no matter where you are, it's like you always working towards those um, goals. Goals, oh, yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> no, it's true. And we, we all make mistakes, I mean, in some, certain ways, uh, and we all try our best, and, and, and that's got to, be, got to be acknowledged as well. Um, and humility and, and realizing that we are, we are not infallible. We are 
in fact, you know, vulnerable. We're all we we make mistakes. I'm putting your hand up when you make a mistake, and and I'm putting your hand up. To ask, oh. <laughs> your hand up to ask a question and not hurt another. You're right. <laughs> I made a mistake. I forgot to show the food. I know, oh, but we can do that in a bit. That's fine. We can welcome everyone again. But yeah, I think it's really important to 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 be humble uh, and to realize that we are not experts. None of Dora and I aren't experts. Um, but no one's perfect. We're just trying our best in, in this system and in this world, and we're trying to make the system a bit better for, for ourselves and for everyone involved, yeah. animals is, and plants included. Which is the reason why we are making a mostly package free, oh, yes. mostly local, um, definitely plant based, easy, Sunday, simple. Tasty. And and it's very tasty. And nutritious, this is great. So, should we do a quick rundown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, welcome, welcome if you come. Uh, you've just arrived. Hello, everyone. Hello. Turn the doors home. So we're um, making. You're making this semolina savory recipe, a cake, cake or um, bread, and this is what it looks like before it goes in the oven. Yeah, we, we made this earlier on because yeah. it takes too long. I, so I mean, the 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 oven part takes yeah. about forty minutes, but the prep time takes ten minutes. So if you want to mix it up, put it in the oven, and watch a movie with the kids tonight, or just watch a movie yeah, yeah. on your own, or watch a movie with your boyfriend online, oh, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. It's 10 minutes, you mix it up, it's water, it's semolina, and any vegetable you have at home. Black, black, beef, and oven. So versatile, any vegetable, so you don't have to worry about um, specific things. I'm gonna put this in the oven then. Yeah, and you get this amazingness in the end. 180 to 200 oh, degrees. Sesame seed on the top, sorry. Oh, sesame seeds. Um, again, it's all nutritious, it's uh, very, uh, very good for you. Semolina is good for the um, creation of red blood cells. Um, it's better than a white, uh, white wheat, because it's, is it durum wheat? Drum wheat, yeah. Drum wheat. There are lots of vegetables in there as well, which are obviously very, very good. I said drum, but maybe I'm wrong. I think, well, whatever drum is like... <laughs> I think it's barrel wheat or drum wheat or have you pronounce it, whatever it is. It's healthier. And if we're going to see, yes. Sorry. So that's 200, 180 degrees and I'll be in there for how long? About 20 to 25 minutes? Uh, a bit more, like 45, yeah. Okay, and how do you test yeah. it when it's ready? So the testing is with the fork. Yeah. I uh, just put this into the bread. If it comes out dry, it's done. If it's still a bit moist, then it's not done. That's always good. Easy. And we're also making a kale sort of sauce. We found some amazing kale. Unpackaged. Um, unpackaged. In the local farm shop. Which is why we got it. And kale is amazing. It's got uh, calcium. calcium. Really, really good source of calcium. Vitamin K, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, and iron, I believe. And kale can be grown in the UK. We've actually plant, put some uh, um, seeds, we plant, planted seeds, is that right? Yeah. We yeah. sowed some seeds today of two types of kale. So hopefully in a, in a month or two, we'll have some kale of our own. Yes. Shall we, shall we just finish the... Yeah, the so this, this is a kale. So this know? is going to be, yeah, it's pretty much done. We just steamed some kale. So it's a water and kale, that's it. We don't, I don't, we don't really use oil. I no, don't like it. We try not to. Yeah, so um, that's we should just tell why. You can do it. I feel like this oil topic is not covered enough. I don't want to use my chance to talk about oil. <laughs> Go on, and you talk about oil while it's I cover like, some. How many cloves yeah, of garlic? Um, two, please. So, two cloves of garlic, and this is about four leaves of kale? Yeah, about four. Okay. Yeah, yeah just the, on oil. I don't want to speak about it too much because I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a doctor. So, look up your own resources that you trust. The reason I don't consume oil as much is because it's 100% fat. And it doesn't make sense. If I want my fats, I would get it from the original source, which is nuts and seeds. I don't need to have the, the compressed version, just like I don't need to have protein separately. Protein is in every single plant food. I don't need carbohydrates separately. It is in most of the plants. Well, well, I think all, all the plant foods, maybe except nuts, I don't know. Maybe there's a little what? bit nuts and seeds. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Probably not, or if, very little. So you can find everything in the natural form. So then why have it in a chemically? separated form so, so yeah um so that's the reason why i personally don't eat oil as, as much but we do do sometimes so like this is no judgment it's just our preference so on this um couple, do we need to <laughs> chop, chop? so the, the kale pesto which is not a pesto is going to be um, steamed kale and not just just okay the, just put them in. yeah so and i always hit the garlic because it releases the the juices and the and the flavor whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it's something I was told when I was younger. And you know what happens when you're told when things that you're, when you're younger, you sort of carry on believing them, I carry on doing them. So that's what I do. So I'm just chucking them straight in there, which is amazing. Easy, this is so simple. <laughs> okay, so we, we got um, <laughs> clarification. So you sow seeds and you plant our plants. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.
Sowing seeds, so we sowed some seeds today. Yeah. But do you sow them when do you even sow them when they're when you put them in a pot? Is that so? Or is it potting know. seeds? I don't know. Well, you're trying at least. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's the is. first time you're growing vegetables on our own, and I really recommend trying this right now. It's it's not too late. You can still plant a lot of things, and oh, it's yeah. it's super fun. I mean, who knew? It's literally so entertaining to wake up in the morning and check how well your plants are doing. Yeah, yeah, it's really really good. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing, and it's it is good fun, and it's hard work, it's physical work, and it's beautiful, and it's something you can do outside now. You can do that if you're mm. outside, or you can have it on a windowsill and just have herbs and cress, which is really simple to make to grow. It just grows. Oh yeah, yeah. And then, uh, a couple of weeks, I think, we started uh, having our own oh, cress. cress is easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, if you live in a small apartment, you don't have access to gardens. Yeah, a garden or an allotment, and you don't have too much space. And you need something quick. You can literally just put cress into a pot, and it will come up in a week. A uh, couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we ate this with our last three meals, and so so good. So yeah, good. really good. And what what else? And what else we're doing? The, the third the third part of the uh, the meal or the, the meal tonight or the cooking tonight is mushroom, asparagus, and uh, a bit of rosemary and salt and pepper, and just in the oven. So do you want to, um, what are you going to do with that? Just add some coconut. Okay, so I'm going to put the vegetables in for these amazing mushrooms. Mushrooms, wow, ah, love mushrooms. They're really, really good for you. Um, lots of this ones, they're very, they're high in niacin, I believe. Loads of micronutrients, loads of vitamin Bs. Um, really, really, really good for you. Really, I, I, I love, and they taste amazing. A lot of people have this, don't like the texture of them. Um, but I feel sorry for those people. Because <laughs> I love it. So I'm lucky, but uh, <laughs> we wash these. And also, sorry. Dora introduced me to it, cutting the, the top oh. of the stalk off. Because there, it is usually often quite dirty. But there was another reason for it. Oh, man. I don't know if it's true. Well, this if, is another. If, if anyone knows, can you please let me know if it's true? But I heard a rumor that sometimes the mushroom people. <laughs> <laughs> Use the same knife to chop off a mushroom and maybe something else that is could be potentially poisonous. I mean, there is no need, there is no way you can check it if they chop another mushroom. So to avoid the contamination, you would chop off this bit where the knife touched um, the mushroom. But I don't, I don't, you don't, you don't lose from it from chopping it off. Is it true? It's it's literally not a lot. It's just like a just a sliver, half a centimeter. Yeah, just yeah. just to remove that part where the knife. Uh, so I'm putting them in whole, but you can put you can chop them up if you want. I like them a bit, uh, a bit, a bit with a bit of texture on them. And also talking about chopping the stalks off, this is English grown asparagus, which is uh, seasonal at the moment. It's coming out. If you have an asparagus bed, you're very lucky because it takes three years for an asparagus bed to start producing fruit. But once it does, it goes on. For, it can go on for 80, 90, 100 years. It's amazing to look after it. Um, but if you have a bit of patience and time in three years, you can plant, I think it's a crown or a corn, uh, and it produces these amazing, uh, wonderful asparagus, and they taste beautiful. It's full of, these are really good. These are full of, um, again, lots of vitamins, phosphorus, um, and, and, and iron, I think. Um, but what I do with these, and what most people do with these, is you get the asparagus and then you just break the tip, because the tip is just a bit rubbery and a bit dry. And then it, it just breaks off naturally into these sizes, and then I'll put them in with the mushrooms. Yeah. This one is the same farm shop where we got the unpackaged kale. Yeah, we were so yeah. lucky. Farm shops, today is like farm shops, farm shops. It's really true, actually. The farm shops are, and, and small shops are actually, we're finding a, a, a lot better than supermarkets because they're, they have so much produce, don't they? And no plastic. And, no, and yeah, we do hardly any plastic, I mean, we don't, and hardly any cubes as yeah, well. Which is really we good. never buy, well, our situation is never, but we, we rarely buy any supermarket food anymore. Yeah. First of all, I don't know where they come from. I mean, it's probably the same appliance to these farm shops, some of them as some well. Of them, yeah. But with a Tesco, like, how do you know if your produce has been ethically sourced, whatever that means? Um, what kind of farm it is coming from? I mean, we just talked about this before. There was this investigation in, I think, Spanish Sorry, yeah. uh, vegetable farms that it's basically more than slavery what is being done to those people. And so how, how do I know how you actually expect? So the best thing is either I get from a local farm shop and I hope it's seasoned, I hope it's local, maybe I can ask, or I grow my own. So right now, they're growing, but they're not ready. So we're trying to get from local farm shops. And anyway, I'm just going to blend this up. Uh, this is the kale and 
onions, just to make, not onions, garlic. Garlic. Just to make a bit of a sauce. And a bit of a noise. <laughs> Can I? Yeah, go please. <laughs> Sorry. We've got a couple of a couple of comments while while she's making a lot of noise. So any comments really welcome. Any suggestions? We really want to learn about uh simple food and beautiful food and anything really. I mean, you know, this is this is a time for us to be able to absorb when we want if we want. Um, some amazing comments from you all. Jack Hocking, vegan food is great, plant-based food is amazing. It's uh, low carbon footprint, most of the time, and no, really hardly any oppression at all. I mean, animal agricultural systems, it's full of imp uh, I mean, oppression. And, and, and Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's worth mentioning that you can actually be very oppressive as a vegan as well. So, so watch out where your food comes from and how it's been made and so forth. Very true. So That's like, what you have, you were mentioning it before. Yeah. It's very, very true. And if you grow your own, then you know it's uh, there's no oppression. And really, really uh, tiny, sorry, come on. Tiny uh, carbon footprint. So thank you all for the comments. Ah, oh, mushrooms. Um, Suzanne Parkhouse said mushrooms are really good for digestion, which is great. So thank you very much for that information. Amazing, amazing. So yeah, we sow seeds and plant plants. That's what we've been doing. So please, please, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, welcome, and please send any messages that you have or any comments or any questions, and we'll try and talk, uh, talk to them now, or we'll see them afterwards for sure because we always do. Bing. So what I'm doing this, what, what have you done then? What have you done? What have you done? So I have uh, blended up the kale and some garlic. This is a part of our, I don't care, 10 minutes recipe. <laughs> I mean, it's taking about 45 minutes now, but it's because we talk so much. But it's semolina cake recipe. Let's just try really again. This is the star of the show because we're showing about yeah. 25. <laughs> yeah, I know. We pre made this so we can show you how it's going to look like. But what we will put next to this is just um, boiled, what is it, not boiled, steamed kale with some garlic because we love that taste and it was unpackaged and so forth. And some. Um, Look at that color. The color yeah. I mean, the colors go so amazingly together. Yeah. It's really, really beautiful. And we are going to roast. Asparagus and mushrooms. Let's put it in right now. So I'm going to, I'm just going to, um, yeah, go uh, with the asparagus and mushrooms, I'm going to drizzle, some people drizzle, will drizzle olive oil, but I'm going to drizzle some, uh, some red sheet, red sheet oil. That's uh, James Bond's red sheet oil. Uh, it's, uh, well, might be Scottish, but it's um, UK based, this one is. Um, uh, so a very little bit of oil. We were saying we don't use too much oil. I like a bit of oil. I was brought up in Greece. They love olive oil. Let's <laughs> have five liters of olive oil for my own mom. <laughs> <laughs> <me>. Thanks, mom. Hello. <laughs> uh, for the olive oil. But again, we're now I'm going to have to stop doing that because importing and exporting, exporting, which might be which. Is it. So local oil. Be an expert, don't export. Uh, local asparagus <laughs> and local, as far as I'm, I don't know about the local mushrooms, but it's definitely local. Uh, yeah. Asparagus. So drizzle that with a little bit of oil. Sorry, See, that's not too much. It's okay. Good exercise. Absercise. Salt. We use Himalayan pink salt. It's, uh, it's I think it's healthier than um, the normal table salt, and it's actually really, really strong, so you don't need too, too much. And they say a bit of fresh rosemary, but I'm going to put some, some dried rosemary on. And rosemary mm -hmm. and mushrooms go so well together. It's so, well, it's so does with thyme, and you can add your own favorite herbs to this, dried or fresh. Oh, that's really cool. So uh, Suzanne from Facebook suggested that uh, mushrooms are good for the digestive system. Oh, I just said that one, but it don't matter. She was going, nye, nye, nye. It's confirmed. Now I know it's true. No, 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 I said that she said that. Oh, uh, so that's the thing. If I focus on one thing, I can't do another. So Where's the pepper? But, and uh, a little bit of pepper as well. Oh, I just don't know if pepper is local. Find out. I don't think it is, because it was... Uh, it was a long, you know, back in the day, it was oh, the man, spice. Pepper, it was the spice trail, wasn't it? Or spice road, and it was brought in from, I think, Asia, and it was like more, more it was more valuable than gold. So, can anyone please recommend uh, another Going spice into the oven. that could replace pepper? And oh, yeah, that's a good point. And pepper, uh, actually, cress is quite a peppery taste, so you can add it a, a peppery taste onto it. Okay. So this is going in, and this will go in uh, as soon as the mushrooms are ready. Probably about ten to twelve minutes, they'll be ready. And oh, is that five minutes? I know, but I say it's because the mushrooms are quite thick, so you can cut them up 
And asparagus is usually eight minutes. So okay. that'll go next to the top bread. Oh, that's too yeah, That's okay. So, okay. So what's that? I think we should run it up soon. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, it's been, it's been great, isn't it? It's been wonderful. Um, we're trying to create a peaceful world by cooking. So, well, this is <laughs> this is good with plants. Yeah, well. I just feel like I have to address something. Cool. So, I said this in the previous show as well, but I want to emphasize this again that this is obviously a super privileged cooking yeah, show because right. we are in the UK and we are using a stove and we have an mm. oven and we have a blender and and so on. So, even though we do chose recipes that are um, mostly locally sourced and, pa and package free and yeah and simple and uh, and what what else. Um, Seasonal. Uh, and and um, plant based as well. Yeah. So hopefully, not, not you know, these meals hopefully contribute the least to many, many global problems and local problems that we have. At the same time, we also realize that this life all together is a part of the problem as well. And so we work on minimizing that as well. And for example, we said to forage more yeah. and have an allotment and burn less. So <laughs> we turn on the lights, but normally we try not to turn the lights on. Yeah. So like there are a lot of other things that I think we could and should and can all look into right now. So yeah, if you are inspired by this, I recommend that, um, you know, share your ideas as well and uh, feel free to discuss with this friend Please and family, yeah. you know, what else can we do to uh, minimize our footprint together? Yeah, as, as, a, as, a, yeah, as a community and as a, as, a, yeah. as a world. I mean, Dora inspires me all the time and gets all these wonderful ideas. I, I'm like, oh, oh, it doesn't matter if it's a bit of plastic and Dora's like, I think it matters. So, you know, we're also trying zero waste as much as possible. And with the kale, we were so happy that we found it wasn't wrapped in plastic, which is always is in the supermarket. And I just want to show you one thing. So we're, we're talking about allotments and planting and what we've been doing. And from one of my clients, I'm a gardener. So one of my clients uh, had a lot of pots that we've taken. So rather than throw them away, we're using a lot of those pots. Mm -hmm. We're also using um, things that we can find that you find at home. So you can use um, uh, the loo rolls, the cardboard, fill them with um, the soil. And if you plant things like carrots or parsnips that have, or leeks maybe, that uh, need to grow down, you can actually plant the whole of the, um, the cardboard roll into the ground. And also uh, we are using, because for a while we were wondering about the Tetra packs because we don't, we don't use drink uh, dairy milk because it's not very good for the environment, it's oppressive to the animals, the poor cows, and the whole system, please look into it. It's, it's, a, it's an awful system. Um, please consider uh, not drinking dairy. It's very important. But these Tetra packs um, are uh, come with the milk that we buy, the, the plant-based milk. So we this? were thinking, what do we do with it? What so, do we do with it? So this is something that totally interests me to. This is mulch. And if you put mulch on top, it's supposed to keep the moisture for longer. And it stops the weeds from coming up. That's true as well. So we've actually used this, converted this into a pot and uh, uh, got soil in there. And two tomato plants in there. Oh, and we've nice. got little holes underneath. So and then a spider. And we've got a spider now. Well. So the spider's like it too. Right, let's run it up and uh, shall we just create a plate for this plate? Yeah, with the, where is it? Just with the bread. Yeah. So maybe one slice of these. So this has been, so this been Dora here, amazing Dora. I'm Toby, <laughs> cooking for climate. Um, please uh, follow. Extinction Rebellion, Animal Rebellion, Movement of Movements, and have a look at uh, the campaign uh, Alone Together and the new uh, idea or the new campaign, which is uh, No Going Back, which is really, really wonderful, uh, important, and I think vital that um, we have a system that's led us to where we are right now. We're in isolation, the virus has spread because of this system. The climate, um, uh, we have, we're in this climate catastrophe, the planet is suffering. And we're on a, a, a road to whatever we're on, um, not the greatest destination, but we can make a difference. Um, and we don't want to go back to that same system. So we, this is a, a chance to actually create, to think about and to inspire each other with uh, ideas on, on how, to, how to step forward peacefully and how to make our, our footsteps as positive and as least damaging as possible. And in that case, um, <laughs> Let's show you what sort of 
half 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 ready and uh, half off. So yeah, the mushroom is not ready, but just for the display, I wanted to put them on the plate because this is amazingly gorgeous. So this is the salmon bread we made out of salmon water and vegetables in like ten minutes, and then we put the roasted vegetables, and this is just a kale, kale and, and garlic. garlic pesto with that nut. So it's not a pesto; it's a dip sauce, and we've got some home homegrown cress. This is Greek cress. It's very peppery. So that's another alternative to pepper. Really yeah. Mushrooms and asparagus. This is our, what was it? Super Sunday. Uh, no, no, no. I know. You made this up. I can't Sunday remember. Sunday, super snack. Oh. Simple Sunday, super snack. That's Simple it. Sunday, <laughs> super snack. So that's it. That's, how, that's what it is. So, uh, enjoy. I've, uh, we've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed it? Mm, very much so. Always enjoyed it's it. Lovely. So thank you very much. Thanks for all the comments. Yeah, Thanks, thank you. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. And everyone. And, and Mirabel, and Nixon Shrebel, and everybody. And thank you for everyone who stands up uh, against oppression and stands up for a, a, a better, better world. So peace and love to you all. And big up the Russian dog rescue. Oh, nice. All right. Bye. Bye. Um, right. Oh, thanks for that, Toby and Dora from Animal Rebellion. Feeling really hungry now myself, but all I've got in the fridge is a solitary cucumber at times. Thanks for watching and all your comments and questions. Cooking for Climate will be back next week on Friday for more delicious and plant-based immune-boosting recipes. Immune-boosting recipes, should I say. That won't cost the earth. In the meantime, head over to rebellion.earth to find out what we're up to at this time of corona lockdown. Love, peace, rage and respect.